Hey you guys, welcome to part two of my Discord bot tutorial. Um, this video will honestly be less about making a Discord bot. It could almost be a standalone tutorial um, because it'll be more of an introduction to C Sharp. So if you're already familiar with C Sharp, um, feel free to just uh, ignore this video. But before you skip this video, um, if you don't know C Sharp and you want to continue with this series, I would strongly recommend that you watch this video. Um, but don't feel like you have to remember everything. Uh, there's not going to be any quizzes and I'm going to still explain everything in depth as we go through it um, in the future videos in this series. Uh, this is more just so you can understand what we're doing on a deeper level. So that way you're not just uh, typing the code that I type in every video, but um, you're learning the tools that you'll need to continue and go on and make your own features that, that you want in the future. So <clears throat> getting started, C Sharp is an object oriented programming language, which is nice because it's very similar to the way we work with objects in real life. Like you have a car and there's things you can do with that car, like um, push the gas pedal or push the brake pedal. And so in C Sharp, it varies between languages, but in C Sharp, there are two basic kinds of code you'll be writing. Um, there's structure code, which sort of organizes the program. There's command code, which tells the program what to do. And command code is executed from top to bottom. Well, technically all the code is executed from top to bottom but um, the structure code is less important of what comes first and I'll explain this better in a minute but these terms structure code and command code they are not standard terms at all I, I completely made them up just um, to better explain these concepts if you try and go up to another programmer and say oh hey is this uh, blah 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 your structure code they'll, they'll say what it's really all code is the same, but this is just an easier way to visualize it. So first let's look at the structure code. The basic unit, I guess, that you'll be working in is called a class. And so this is this represents an object. So if you wanted to represent a car that could go places and have values, you'd use a class. And classes can contain variables. So like uh, if you had a car that had health or a level of gas or its speed those would all be variables and classes can also have functions and so functions are uh, basically tasks that the class can perform so like if you want the car to push the gas pedal that would be a function or the brake pedal a function is like a little machine and you can pass in values and also receive values out of the function so for example, um, you could get the name of the car and it would pass out the name of a car. Or maybe you could, um, when you push the gas pedal, you can pass in a value telling how hard to push the gas pedal. And it would have a different effect depending on how hard you push the gas pedal. So once you sort of have the structure defined, um, like with the class and the functions, well, you've got to tell the functions how to do what you want them to do, right? So in order to do that, you use command code. Um, and again, that's just my term for it, but it, you put code in the functions that will explain exactly how to do what you want it to do. So here's an example of some structure code. Um, as you can see, it's a class car, and then this bracket right here begins the class and down here is the matching bracket that ends the class and inside here is all the functions and if you put want variables you could put them up here so here's a function called press gas and if you if it takes in any values they would go here this none of these functions do and if it outputs any values it goes right here here it says void, which is another word for just like nothing. So it, it, this doesn't output or input anything. And so in order to tell C Sharp how to press the gas pedal, we would add the code right here. And so here's similar press break. It doesn't take in any values. It doesn't output any values. 
but get car name, it doesn't take in any values, but it outputs the a string, which it would be the car name. And get gas level will output an integer, which is a, a whole number. So let's look at some command code now. Um, the command code would go in between these brackets for all of the functions. Um, here's uh, there's a lot of things you can do with command code, and these are this is basically a summary. You can create a variable. So a variable is uh, just like a it's like a bucket, and you can put things in the bucket. Um, you can have an integer bucket which is like a one or a three or any number any whole number you can have a floating point number which is represented by a double so 3.14 or just any any number um, you can have a string which is a string of letters or characters um, and so just like the word hello or the sentence what's up or just any any string of characters there are other data types um, such as objects are data types. You can create a variable that is an object or a class, sorry. And then once you've created a variable, you can set a variable. So um, you can set a variable to a fixed value. So like if you had a health variable, you would set it to 100 when the game starts. You can set a variable to a value that's returned by a function. So maybe you want to, uh, to stay organized, you can um, have a function that reads from a file, maybe a setting or something, and load it into a variable. Or you can have a more complex uh, assignment, so like a calculated value. So you could have, um, on previous lines, you have a variable that's set to user input, and then another variable that's set to user input. And then you can say the result is equal to number one plus number two. And you have like a very simple calculator. Another thing you can do is call a function. So you can set a variable to a value returned by the function. Or you can just call a function and not do anything with the return value. And some functions don't return anything anyway. You can return a value. So if you're in a function and you want to pass back a value, you use the return keyword and um, you can return anything that you can set a variable to. So you can return a fixed value, so you can just return five every time. Or you can return another function, or a value returned from another function. Or you can calculate a value. And finally, you can alter the control flow. So normally, um, the code is executed from top to bottom, um, but you can do a conditional statement. So maybe if if some some condition is true, then you'll do something. Otherwise, you don't do it. So, for example, if your health is zero, then you would kill the player. Otherwise, you know you wouldn't kill the player. And a loop is another conditional or control flow. Um, so, if you want to create a hundred bullets. You could copy and paste that line a hundred times, or you can create a loop that runs a hundred times, and that um, will create a hundred bullets with like two lines of code, which is awesome. So that, if you've never done any programming before or C sharp, that was probably pretty overwhelming, um, and that's fine. You don't have to remember all that. Um, just keep that in mind, and you can always come back to this video and look at that. So I can show you a quick example. Let me pull up this Visual Studio. So this is the a class program. And Visual Studio has other things like namespace and using, using statements. Or C Sharp has these things, not necessarily Visual Studio. Um, but so here's the class. And here's a function inside that class. And then here is the code that runs when that function is called. Um, so this right here, static void main string arguments. So this is the input into the function, and there is no output. But anyway, this this function main with string args, this is a special kind of function. Um, you'll see it whenever you make a console application. 
this is where the program begins. This is where the code starts running. So at the beginning of the program, it starts right here and it just goes on down until it gets to here and then it ends. So if we run the program, we'll see that it writes hello world and then waits for us to press enter to exit the program. And it did so. So we press enter and it exits. So I have another code file here, which is car. And here's another class. The class is car. And the car has a variable um, speed. So the car keeps track of its own speed. And when you press the gas pedal, the speed will increase by 10. So it takes speed and adds 10 and then assigns that back to speed. So if speed is 5, then speed will be 15. And when you press the brake, the speed immediately goes to 0. We're not going for realism, just <laughs> something simple. And then this get speed function, it doesn't take in any values, but it returns an integer, which is the same type as speed. So we can say return speed, so that when you call get speed, it will return the speed. I just said speed so many times. So back here, instead of saying hello world, let's create a car. So we're going to create a variable of type car, and let's just call it my car. So this is the type of the variable, and this is the name of the variable. We can set my car equal to a new car. So um, if you try and just use, if I didn't do this, and I said my car dot press gas, then it would have an error because you haven't set my car to anything. You have to set my car to a new car. So let's press the gas a few times. And remember, every time you press the gas pedal, the speed will increase by 10. So if we, if we press the gas pedal three times, the speed will be 30. And we can test that by saying console.writeLine. This is a function, and it prints to the console. And so we can say your speed is, and then we're going to add my car dot get speed. So everything within these quotes will just be those letters exactly. But as soon as we get outside the quotes, we can add the speed to that. So that way it displays the speed. And then let's go ahead and say my car dot press brake and then we can display the speed again. So it's gonna press the gas pedal three times, the speed should be 30, and then it'll press the brake, and then the speed should be zero. So if we run that, your speed is 30 and your speed is zero. So I guess that's the best I can explain. Um, again, if you don't understand, don't sweat it. Um, you can copy my code from the, from the next tutorials. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorials, I'll start going through this list. Uh, I'll probably start with some more basic commands and features. Um, but if you have any other things that you would like to see me uh, explain how to do with your Discord bot, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you have any code that you're having trouble with, you can post it to gist.github.com and post all your code here, add as many files as you need. And then once you upload it, paste that link into the comments or message me and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching.